Welcome to Mount Diablo Astronomical Society Astro Live. This session is called Our Place in Our Galaxy. I'm Marnie Berenson, and I've been with the Mount Diablo Astronomical Society since 1990. And I'm looking forward to presenting this to you today. OK, I thought this was very uh, apropos because this is the way that a lot of people think about the sky when they look up. It's pickles. I got permission from the, uh, the publisher to use it. And Grandpa's saying, do you see all those stars up there, Nelson? Uh-huh, says Nelson. Well, there's lots and lots and lots and lots of them. And they're a long, 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 long way away. Wow, I didn't know you knew so much about astronomy, Grandpa. Well, I thought that was a great introduction because we are going to be exploring big numbers, how far, how, how many, and that kind of thing, and make those numbers understandable. We're going to look at the scale of the solar system compared to our galaxy, actually get a picture in your head of what we can see of our galaxy, its stars, and our place in it. Ways to visualize large numbers like 200 billion stars and 200,000 light years. And as one of you just asked, what's with the dense band of light across the dark night sky that we call the Milky Way? And how is that different from other, other stars? So hopefully, this session will help to answer those questions. If you do have, have questions, feel free to put them in the chat or, um, or just write them down and we'll talk about them toward the end. But before we go too much farther, I wanted to reiterate what we talked about in our first session, which was the difference between the solar system, the galaxy, and the universe, because that's uh, it's very common that people use those terms interchangeably. They say solar system when they mean universe, they say galaxy when they mean solar system and things like that. And so uh, let's, let's just make sure that we have all of our terms understood. understood. Uh, solar system, that's the sun and all the planets. Our galaxy is this sea of stars we live in. Our sun is one of those 200 billion stars that's in our galaxy. And the universe is all the galaxies. And there are, and our galaxy is one of several hundred billion galaxies in the universe. So that okay with everyone? Everybody got that? Okay. So today we're gonna to be focusing on our galaxy. We're gonna move away from our solar system and talk about our galaxy and the scale of that. Um, good, all right. So this is an artist's conception uh, produced by NASA of our galaxy and its various spiral arms and what have you, and of course the core here. Now let's see where our solar system is. Anybody see that little thing fly in there? That's the approximate location of our solar system, but it's not that size, no, even in the size of that circle. On this scale, it's about a nanometer across maybe, uh, you know, smaller, than a nanometer outside of the carbon atom. But that's really hard for people to understand. And you'll also notice that we're about a third of the way out from between the center and the outer, outer limits. We're, we're saying that the solar system is inside of that circle, but it is really so small that it would be a little like trying to find your porch light, your neighbor's porch light on an image of the United States at night. 
So for example, this is Las Vegas. Can you find a porch light in Las Vegas? So no, it's not possible to, to see something that's that tiny uh, on that model. So how do we make it so that it is understandable? Here's what we're going to do. You remember we made a pocket solar system in the first session of, of Astro Live. And so, but now we're gonna shrink the solar system even further, let me get my little prop here, so that it's about the size of this quarter, okay? In other words, our solar system would fit into the palm of your hand like this. So if you have a quarter, pull it out and look at that, put it in your hand. And that's the size that we're shrinking down the solar system so that you can actually conceive of something that's this size. The sun is in the middle and it's, uh, you know, it's smaller than a grain of dust. And Nep yeah, Neptune's orbit is all around the edge, all around the edge of the quarter. Uh, well, it takes about four light hours, four hours for light from the sun to reach out to, to Neptune's orbit. I'm gonna set that down and just let you imagine the center of your palm with the solar system in it, you know. About the, and so the distance across the quarter, the our quarter solar system, is about eight light hours. So eight light hours, get that picture in your head. But our galaxy is two hundred thousand light years across. So you know, eight light hours but 200,000 light years. I'm gonna be talking, uh, mentioning a few, few things and if you wanna unmute and call out what you think, that'd be great. So 200,000 light years. Now, compared to this quarter uh, to make a true scale, well, approximate scale, you know, with this being the solar system, would the galaxy be bigger than a house? Would it be bigger than a city? Our galaxy would span North America on this model. So if you want to unmute and go, ooh, that'd be cool. Ooh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, um, well spoken. <laughs> yeah. So if our solar system is the size of a quarter, our galaxy would span roughly 2,500 uh, miles. Now, I should have mentioned 200,000 light years may sound, wait a minute, I thought our galaxy was like 100,000 light years or 160,000 light years or something like that. Well, it's, it's only been in the last few years that, that there have been additional research that showed, oh, actually our galaxy is bigger than that. And on your, your, um, on your uh, handout, there's, there's an article there. The disk of the Milky Way is larger than, than we thought. And there's a couple of articles about that that you may want to look at if you want further information on how we doubled our size, you know, doubled our diameter rather. 2,500 miles across. Now our galaxy is about, it is about a hundred to one. In other words, it's 200,000 light years wide, but out here where we are in the solar system, it and you know pretty much all along in this area here it's roughly a 2000 light years thick so it's very wide but it's very flat 
So if if it's a hundred to one, it, it you know it's shaped a bit like a long playing record. You remember those ladders? Mm -hmm. I guess they're coming. Yeah, they're they're coming out again now, which is nice. So on that scale, you know, two hundred to, to two hundred to two is a hundred to one. So twenty five hundred to one is twenty five miles thick. And here we are. These two numbers are our model, width and depth. And here we are about over the Rocky Mountains. The center of our galaxy on our North America model is roughly over Kansas. So you see when we're looking this way, we're looking toward the center of our galaxy. When we're looking this way, we're looking away from the center of our galaxy. Oh, so how, how high is 25 miles high? That, that's another thing that we want to use with a mental model. Instead of using numbers, let's use a picture. Airplanes fly about, uh, their, their cruising altitude is about seven miles high. So our galaxy model will be about a little over three times the height that air, airplanes fly. 25 miles. But we have to fill up this galaxy with stars. So there's our model, North America, three times the height that airplanes fly. So I, I hope we've gotten a concept of the size of our solar system compared to our galaxy. Now we're going to talk about the other big number in our galaxy, and that's the 200 billion stars, 200 with nine zeros after it. But how much is 200 billion, right? That's a really hard number for anybody to think of. So I'm going to give you a way to picture what 200 billion is. Everybody know what a football field looks like, yes? If we were to take a football field and build a wall about four feet high all the way around it, all the way around that football field, all the way into the end zones and everything. And then we're going to take bird seed to represent the stars in our galaxy. So we're going to build a bird seed galaxy, if you will. And so Remember our, our football field with a four foot wall all the way around it. We're going to get a whole lot of bird seed and fill up a whole lot of dump trucks and dump all of that bird seed into on top of that football field until it reaches the top of the wall. Now, that's roughly 200 billion bird seed representing the 200 billion stars in our galaxy. So does that give you a picture? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great way of uh, looking at it. Okay. Now, now does that look like a lot of bird seed? Looks a lot, like of, a lot bird of bird seed stars? A lot of bird seed. A lot of bird seed stars. I like to use it when I hear other big numbers. I like to use that to picture things like one trillion dollars, for example. One trillion bird seed would be 16 feet deep on the football field, for example. So it's a way to picture really large numbers. But what do we have to do? with all of that bird seed. Now they're going to become stars. And what we're going to do is fill up our model. We have to take the bird seed that's on the, on the football field and distribute it all around North America, 25 miles deep. So spread out like that, all over North America, 25 miles deep, does it still seem like a lot of stars? Yeah. 
I, I would agree. Yeah. Hey, uh... <laughs> but they're not nearly as dense as they were when they were sitting on the football field. So now we have our, our galaxy filled with 200 billion stars. We're one over here. We're this one over here in this general vicinity. Now, here we go. You are sitting on top of an airplane, let's say, uh, or a magic carpet, you know, just flying over the Rocky Mountains here. And imagining this is, this is us. Now, when you look up, you're going to see a few birdseed stars above you, right? And when you look down, you're going to see a few birdseed stars down here, down here. But when you look across this way, or this way, or this way, or this way, all around, what are you going to see? Lots more. Yeah, a lot more. A big dense band of light with a few stars above it, a few stars below it. And when we look out this way, is it going to be as dense as when we look out this way? Much less dense. Much less dense. So, uh, yeah. A question. Uh, I always read that we were about two thirds out from the center of our galaxy. Did I say one third? Yes. And that's another one of the new um, new findings. That's why we need to read that article. Yeah, so because the, the, the outer perimeter of the galaxy has been determined to be much greater than we first thought. Yes. Yes, it has. And about dark matter is another question entirely. This yeah. is visible. Uh, part of our galaxy. So let, let me take you out to a dark sky, since it's daytime right now, and I can't take you out to a dark sky. There we are. Okay, this is what the sky would look like tonight at about 8.30. You can see the date up here in the corner, tonight about 8.30, if we were under dark skies to allow us to see the, uh, the Milky Way there. Uh, but before I do that, let me show you another way to look at or to conceptualize that band of light across, across the sky. Now, it's like looking over a city at night, where you can see the individual lights that are closest to you around here, yeah? But as you look off into the distance, the lights start blending together into a haze. You see how that is? And so that's what's happening when you're looking across the plane of the Milky Way that's sitting there on top of North America, right? Sure. Okay. So let's go back to the sky tonight. We're out under the dark, dark sky here. We're looking, no, this is Northwest here, there's North. So what we're gonna do is take that Milky Way model that we have all over the the North America and tilt it up. So now it's overhead, over ab above us. And so this is what we see in the night sky. When we look this way, excuse me, from the Milky Way, from, from the dense part, and we look this direction away from it, we see a few stars. When we look this direction from it, we see a few stars. But this is looking directly through the plane of our galaxy and all of those distant stars are blending into a haze. If you take binoculars and you look at that haze, you will see that it is just a whole lot of stars. They're tens 
of thousands of light years away. And so we can't see individual stars that far away. The farthest that we can see individual stars with just our eyes is roughly 8,000 light years distant. And on that, on our North America scale, that's about, about 100 miles away on that scale. So roughly from here, here in Walnut Creek to Monterey. So in all directions around us, that's as far as we can see individual stars. And of course, we can only see the most, or the brightest, the biggest and brightest ones that are uh, at the limit of that 8,000 light years away. But here now, this is kind of interesting because we're actually at this time of year in the evening, we're actually looking on this picture of our galaxy behind me, this umbrella, umbrella galaxy. We're actually looking this way. We're looking out of the galaxy. We're not looking toward the center. We're looking toward the center in the summertime. But this is winter and we're looking that way. So when we look out of the galaxy on that uh, North America model, that's like looking toward where, where we're over the Rocky Mountains, that's like looking toward California as opposed to toward Kansas. So in the sky, we can look at what is exactly that way from us and that's this area right here, not real dense. A lot more dense here as we scan across our galaxy. This would be the part that is down toward Mexico. This would over here would be the part that's up toward Canada. But this is looking across toward California on that on that model, but we've lifted it up. We've lifted the whole thing up with this side lifted up so that we have it over overhead. And you might recognize Auriga, the constellation of Auriga, and Auriga is actually looking opposite from the center of our galaxy. The center of our galaxy is just above Sagittarius. And Sagittarius, we see in the southern sky in the summer. So this is Capella, that star. Here's Auriga. Here's Cassiopeia. And as we look this way, you see, we, we realize that we're not gonna see the center of our galaxy until maybe morning when this is when this is going to be lower farther along well uh, let's shall we go look and see what we have in the morning here okay. yes we're going to advance about an hour oops let's, we're looking over the east here i left these here so that we can keep our perspective okay it's now 10:30 11, 12, 1. Now our galaxy is going this direction here. Hmm. It seems to be dropping back down to be even with the horizon, isn't it? Well, 3 o'clock by Orion, 4 o'clock, 4.30 rather, and over here in 5.30, 6.30, let's see. And we find, oh, there's Antares right there, which is the heart of the scorpion. You can see the three stars and the claws of the scorpion here. And Antares is the heart of the scorpion and Sagittarius is down here. Now, Sagittarius, we're not going to see for another hour, but by then the sun's going to be in the sky, so we can't see it. So let's go a few months ahead now. 
to see if we can see it. Okay, now this is February. So let's keep going farther. Okay, now we can clearly see Sagittarius here. You see there's, there's the teapot right here, the spout of the teapot. And the center of our galaxy is right here. Notice how much more dense this is because that's looking toward the center of our galaxy like that. And it's the same thing here as it is there. If we look above the plane, we see a few stars. And in, I mean, of our galaxy, above the plane of our galaxy. If we look below the plane of our galaxy, we see a few stars. But this is toward the center where it's a lot more dense than it was over, see here's, here's uh, Cassiopeia again, and um, Auriga is down here, which is where the other direction is from our galaxy. You also might notice what the constellations are here. See, here's, here's uh, uh, Cygnus, the swan, the summer triangle is here. Here's Cassiopeia and as you can see, then it goes through Scorpius, this part. But it's not the same constellations that the ecliptic, the line where our planets go through. In other words, if this is the plane of our galaxy, the plane of our solar system is actually at an angle to it. So it, it's different constellations that we see when we are, are tracing our galaxy through the sky. Now, let's go back to where we were for tonight. Okay, here we are. Now, when we're looking out this way, you can see that we can actually see out of our galaxy. And there's a lot of ramifications of this model that we have. And one of them is the distance to stars. On the scale of the quarter is our, our solar system and North America is our galaxy, the scale is 80 light years to one mile. So for example, if we look at Sirius here, which is the nearest bright star that we can see from here in the Northern Hemisphere. Alpha Centauri is the, is the nearest bright star from the Southern Hemisphere. And on this scale, order North America, 80 light years is one mile. Alpha Centauri would be about the length of a football field away from us at about four light years. This is a little over eight light years. Sirius is a little over eight light years. So it would be about the length of two football fields away from us. You know, one, one bird seed here, one bird seed to 200 yards away. Now, if we look at things that are a little farther away, like Betelgeuse and Aldebaran here, Betelgeuse, part of Orion, there's the belt of Orion, the four stars marking his shoulders and his knees. And Aldebaran, which is part of uh, Taurus, here's the tips of Taurus's horns. There's his face and his long horns going, going up that way. Well, Aldebaran is about 65 light years away. Remember, 80 light years is one mile. So is Aldebaran more or less than a mile away? It's a little less, right? It's about three quarters of a mile away. Whereas Betelgeuse, even though it looks brighter than Aldebaran, is actually about 500 light years away. And on this scale, it's about six miles away from our solar system here in the palm of your hand. So it's a way for people to actually 
conceptualize the distance to various stars or other things in our galaxy. So it also tells us, so that's one other useful thing. It also tells us that all the, everything that we're gonna see in our galaxy is less than 200,000 light years away. Anything beyond 200,000 light years, you know, in millions of light years, that's gonna be another galaxy outside our own Milky Way. That's why uh, Bill Brown in, of our club, of, of uh, Mount Diablo Astronomical Society, we published this image that he took of M33, the Triangulum Galaxy. It's out in the same direction as Andromeda, roughly. And uh, this is one thing that a lot of people are confused about. They see all these individual stars here along with this galaxy. So people wonder, all the stars that we see, are, are some of them here in our own galaxy? Are some in another galaxy? No, we can't see, except with very powerful scopes, individual stars in galaxies outside of our own. All of these stars, we're looking out through the stars of our own galaxy to a galaxy that's way far beyond our galaxy, 2.5 or 6 million light years away. So all of these stars, it's like looking through a speckled window to see lights outside of your house. So that, that's another confusion that people have when they see images of, of galaxies outside our own. Now the light that we're seeing from that band of light across the sky, that's been traveling for tens of thousands of years to reach us here on Earth. The stars that we're seeing on either side of the band of, of the galaxy are relatively close to us because we can see them as individual stars. But the band of stars, the light's been traveling for tens of thousands of years to reach us here on earth. The light left those back during the last ice age of the, of the hazy band that we're seeing. So it's been traveling all that time to reach us here on earth. One small problem for people in cities though, is that as it comes to earth, it is scattered and lost in the artificial light that we have in our cities. And so that's why we have to go to our islands of darkness that we have, where we can actually see dark skies overhead. And there's a few places still left fairly close to us where we can see the, the majesty of, of the band of our Milky Way galaxy across the sky, like uh, Pinnacles National Park is relatively close. From, from here in Walnut Creek, it's about two, two hours away, Pinnacles is. Or you can go to Yosemite. You can go up in the, in the, in the foothills of, of the Sierras to see, see dark skies. As long as you're away from cities, you can see the, the band of the Milky Way. When you're in a place where you can see the band of the Milky Way, Remember this model and realize what you're actually seeing up there in the sky. You're seeing the light from billions and billions of stars in our galaxy. So I hope that you will go and visit some of these islands of darkness in a rising sea of light and, uh, and enjoy while we can and take steps to protect it. We'll have another session about dark skies or that's partially about dark skies. In the meantime, on your handout, there is a line that says saving the dark video on YouTube. This is one of the best I've ever seen documentary on uh, light at night and 
the actually very simple ways to solve the problem. It's just having the desire to do so, to solve the problem of light pollution. So I hope that explains lots and lots and lots of stars that we saw in the Pickles comic and long, 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 long way away. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Marnie. That was great. That's okay. great, Marnie. I'm That's glad good. you enjoyed it. Uh, Marnie? Yes? It's Pete. I... Uh... When I speak to, when I talk to kids, you know, when I'm out there on the street with my telescope, yep. sometimes and, and talk to kids or during our, some of our outreach, of, outreach events, uh -huh. uh, I use the metaphor, as far as the, uh, just one second, I'm sorry. As far as the metaphor of why we see this band of light that we call the Milky Way uh -huh. versus other stars that are not in that appear not to be in the band of light mm -hmm. the analogy of a deep dish pizza <laughs> and the the atoms that are inside that make up the pizza and i ask them to pretend that they're one of the atoms or they're they're living on a world that is like one of these atoms when they look toward the center of the pizza they see a whole bunch more atoms toward the center and beyond the center to the far edges, mm -hmm. more atoms, and they're further away. And so they kind of mush together and they just make this band. When we turn to other directions, we're looking out the top and bottom of the pizza. We're looking out the, the near edge of the pizza and we see more of the individual atoms as individual points of light. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you used a very good analogy. I was just going to bring up this other this other analogy, also the deep dish pizza analogy. Thanks, Pete. Anything else? Well, I, I have a question. If looking at the uh, the picture of the galaxy above your right shoulder there, mm -hmm. and, and the overall picture looks to be circular, the end. The interior is elliptical. Do we do we know why that is? What's the forces there? Oh, that... Why we have a bar here? Right. In the yeah. Yeah. Uh, just look up the difference about uh, about barred galaxies online. Okay. But there's the best thing to do is look look at the latest information about why they formed. See, because okay. it it was probably what 20, 30 years ago we didn't realize we had a barred Right. Galaxy. So, you know, we thought it was just a nice center like we see in a lot of other galaxies. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Now there's more evidence for that. Yeah. Yeah. Marty, in, in fact, the, the very website you got that picture from, um, there is actually another annotated picture, which yeah. actually shows not just one, but a, a kind of a ghost, if you will, of a second bar. And right. I think the thinking is, is that we've undergone a collision with another galaxy way a back virgin. in time. Yeah. So now we're starting to see that there's that structure there, which sure. we didn't see before until we started being able to use a spitzer. Yep. Is, Thanks, Dave. Yeah. Yep. That was very good. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. there is a really good article about that, as Dave points out, on the NASA website about all of this. Because this is stuff that we've only recently discovered. So... It's pretty cool, I think. Well, I hope I've blown your mind a little bit. Blue mine. <laughs> yes, Donna. Will this be available to watch online later? I just yeah, yeah. I'll have good. it posted probably sometime tomorrow if, Great. if I can't finish it tonight. So I've been looking forward to it all week, and somehow I just got in here at like 10 after <laughs> 2, and I thought, oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, I know it's a lot to take up. I know it's a lot, but uh, but it gives you a very nice mental picture. I do I do this particular talk uh, for a lot of people when I'm at national parks or even we've even done it up on Mount Diablo a few times mm -hmm. when we were right. still having public nights. Here. But 
that, yeah, so. But I hope I gave you some tools to actually yes. realize what you're seeing, because uh, when it's it's so overwhelming when you realize what you're actually seeing. Yeah. I, Marnie, do you know yeah. how we figured out in recent? I hadn't heard that we figured out that our galaxy is twice as big as we thought it was. Is there yeah. some simple answer to how we figure that out? Your best bet is to read this this article that's on your. Okay that's on your, on your handout that says, the disk of the Milky Way is larger than, than we thought. Okay, thank so. you. Yeah, it, it was thought back when that Andromeda was larger than the Milky yes. Way. Now it's just the opposite. Milky oh. Way, twice the size of Andromeda. Yay. Yeah, yeah there's a, there's a, a short that? discussion of that in our newsletter this month um, on, on, the, uh, on the same, uh, page that the triangulum galaxy that Bill Brown gave us a picture of that I showed you that picture of the galaxy with all the stars in front of it. Um, there, that same picture is there and it has that discussion. Thanks for pointing that out, Kent. About that's the, that's largely, the, uh, the visible part, but yeah. as I was pointing out earlier, taking into effect into account estimates of the dark matter, mm -hmm. uh, they may estimate the Milky Way is about one and a half trillion solar masses. Solar masses. Is, yeah. And drop is only about 800 billion. Right. Mm. So it, it's tiny <laughs> compared to us. <laughs> We're number one. <laughs> Yay. I, that made my day. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> These articles. Wow. Team Milky Way. <laughs> <laughs> Your, your series has been it's so good thank you so much thank you, thank you. yeah i agree thank you thank you marnie okay well thank you Thanks, marnie. and i will get this posted and see you in maybe a couple of weeks the next one is uh in two weeks from today and it's called uh are all the stars like our sun uh -huh. so. ah that has a lot more about the lives of stars. The... Fantastic. <laughs> okay. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Marnie. It's been a Thanks, wonderful Marnie. audience. So Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Marnie. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.